If you're thinking this video is clickbait, then you can leave right away. No, <laughs> I was just joking. <laughs> Don't leave. No, this video is not clickbait and you can definitely unlock smart access memory for older GPUs like the RX 588GB and Vega 56 in 30 seconds. And like a dozen of mouse clicks as well. <laughs> According to the forum from where I actually took this method, uh, people with GPUs as old as the R9 290X, the R9 380, 390 and so on, people with really old GPUs from let's say 2013, 2015, they could in fact enable smart access memory and if you want to watch there are several methods where you can go step by step to even enable smart access memory or resizable bar in CPUs and yes not GPUs, CPUs as old as the Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge one so the i5 2500K, um, the i5 3670, uh, 3570K for example, if you are really really into it you can go step by step and enable smart access memory or resizable bar for those hardware parts. And the same applies for the GPUs, but on the GPUs it just takes like 30 seconds. But well, without any further delays, let's go to the how to do it part and the benchmarks, of course, with the RX 580 and the Vega 56. Today's video sponsor is GGG Mobile, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. So it only takes 30 seconds for you to unlock smart access memory for your older generation GPU. Like, like literally. literally. All you have to do is to open the link in the description and download the registry file named Rebar Legacy on. After downloading the file, run it and accept the following prompt windows. After that, just restart your computer, open the AMD Adrenaline software and AMD Smart Access Memory will now be unlocked and activated. As for the benchmarks, let's start with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This game is known to benefit a lot from Smart Access Memory in recent GPUs from the 6000 series or even cards such as the RX 5700 XT. In this game, the RX 580 is already performing around the 50 FPS mark, so smart access memory can't really do much. On Vega 56 though, even though the performance increase percentage-wise is around the same, we do have a 5 FPS increase in the averages and 6 FPS increase in the 1% lows, which is lovely since free performance is always welcomed. Cyberpunk 2077 also tends to benefit from smart access memory, but usually a bit less than Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And while the RX 580 gets virtually the same results, Vega 56 gets almost 5 average FPS more and 4 FPS more in the 1% lows, which translates to 9% and 12% performance increase, which is around what you get from overclocking usually, so it's great. Forza Horizon 5 has outstanding performance gains when using smart access memory with recent GPUs, and it seems to not change at all, even for the older cards. The RX 580 got a massive 21% increase in the averages, going from barely achieving 60 FPS to delivering over 73, something that can definitely be felt in real gameplay. With Vega 56 the difference is not so critical because we already had around 90 average FPS. Still we have a 23% increase in the average FPS and 20% increase in the 1% lows, leading to higher 1% lows with smart access memory activated than averages with smart access memory deactivated. Horizon Zero Dawn is another game that benefits from smart access memory and it shows. With the RX 580 we went from 69 to 74 average FPS, which is great for people running 75Hz monitors for example. With the Vega 56 we have a 10% FPS boost in the averages and 1% lows, which is simply awesome. The FPS boost unlocked by smart access memory here is the same as overclocking your GPU, usually, but without actually doing it. Which is great. On Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 though, the performance uplift was kind of null, and I do believe this is due to the lack of driver updates since November for the older GPUs, and I do believe that as soon as the new updates come out, we'll see way better performance on the older AMD GPUs with smart access memory activated. 
this, since the RDNA 3 GPUs with the newer drivers benefit a lot from SmartX's memory in this game, so the older ones with newer drivers as well should be the same case. Fortnite also had a mild performance increase with both GPUs, but more with Vega 56. I do believe that if we reduce the graphics settings to medium or low in order to increase the FPS numbers on the RX 580, we would indeed see bigger FPS increases, but since both GPUs were already running above 60 average FPS, I found that kind of unnecessary. Before anything, just let me bow to the magnificent RE engine from Capcom. Resident Evil Village is running at maximum settings apart from ray tracing and even the old RX 580 could achieve around 86 average FPS in this part, showing how good this game engine is. In terms of performance uplifts, the difference is almost non-existent, but like I said before, this game is already running so great that it is almost hard to believe that a mid-tier GPU from 2017 can still run it at max settings and over 85 FPS, so even with almost no FPS increases, the performance is just great. Now, for the 7 games average, you have around 6% performance boost for the RX 580 and 8% for the Vega 56. And although it doesn't make much difference in terms of averages, in some games it can be a real game changer, like in Forza Horizon 5 for example, or even Horizon Zero Dawn. Still, the performance is free and easy to attain, so I would definitely call this a win-win scenario. So guys, as you saw in some games the performance increases were substantial, for example on Forza Horizon 5 where even the, the newer GPUs get, not even where the newer GPUs get a huge performance increase when using Smart Texas memory, uh, beating the Nvidia ones by a lot in that same scenario, in that Forza Horizon 5 scenario. Even the RX 580 got a substantial increase of around 20-25 or 30% in some scenarios, so going from 60 to over 7, uh, 70 uh, FPS, around 74, so if you're actually having a 75Hz monitor even with FreeSync, going from 60 frames to 74 fr frames make a huge difference in terms of gameplay smoothness, so for the RX 580 users in that particular scenario it is a big win and even across all other games the performance increases are not that big in most scenarios like 3, 4 or 5 FPS but I mean it's free performance and there is an RX 580. If you are activating smart access memory for example on a Vega 56 or a Fury card for example well the performance increase will be higher because the card is also faster and will deliver more FPS. So. The more FPS there are at stake, the more difference there will be in terms of FPS, not percentage wise, but in terms of FPS, because smart access memory actually works as a as a way to make VRAM calls more efficient. Because without smart access memory, the CPU can call a maximum of 256 megabytes of VRAM, but with smart access memory the GPU can actually uh, deliver a call of 8 gigabytes if the GPU has 8 gigabytes or if the GPU has let's say 24 gigabytes VRAM it can deliver a call of 24 gigabytes VRAM instead of having to do dozens of calls to make those same uh, 24 gigabytes VRAM hence making the VRAM more efficient hence in some scenarios or in scenarios where you have more FPS making the FPS even higher, because once again, it makes the VRAM more efficient. Now as for the registry file, you can call it a mod, for example, uh, you do not need to have any kind of modded drivers, okay? You just run your official drivers, okay, you run them as you are running them right now, most likely, just run that registry file and you're good to go. In terms of CPU and GPU compatibility, I tried this on my, on my girlfriend's PC, she has a Ryzen 5 2600, which is not officially supported by smart access memory in most motherboards. Um, and she has an RX 570, but with 4 gigabytes instead of the 8 gigabytes. And I really don't know if it was due to the BIOS on her motherboard that was a Veda BIOS, if it was due to the CPU not being officially supported, or if it was due to the RX 570 being only a 4 gigabytes version. But when I actually tried this registry file mod on her computer, and rebooted the system, the system was having intermittent black screens, okay, it, it was crashing and it had intermittent black screens and I actually had to do a clean installation of the drivers using DDU once again, 
um, and it actually fixed the issue of course so don't don't worry if you actually have this problem you can just uh, uninstall the drivers and install them again and it will be completely fine and once again if you want to go even further go to the link in the description to the official thread uh, where I actually got this fix or mod um, because you can, even if you have an older motherboard that does not support the resizable bar, you can actually do a modded VBIOS for the motherboard, I mean a modded BIOS for the motherboard, uh, you can mod it yourself, there is a step-by-step -step tutorial there, um, just mod the BIOS, install the modded BIOS, then enable smart access memory there, or resizable bar in this case, and you will be able to enable resizable bar for older CPUs, like for example the Intel uh, seventh series and below, even like uh, an i7 2600, for example, 2600K, the i5 2500K, and so on. Old, really old CPUs, and I do believe that it will work the same way for older AMD, AMD CPUs. Maybe even the AMD FX CPUs, maybe even those uh, might actually work. Because if Sandy and Ivy Bridge Intel CPUs work, why shouldn't the AMD FX work as well? And well, I guess that's all for this video. Really nice improvements for free with a, with a really, really easy to use mod on RX 580 and Vega 56. You can use it on the Radeon 7 and any other cards, any really older cards. It's really free performance and it only takes you like 30 seconds. So give it a try. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what performance boost you actually got. Um, if it worked for you or not, which card do you have? Let me know everything because I really want to know, I, I really like to know uh, the experience that you guys have because that's how I learn and that's how we learn as a community. Thanks a lot for watching the video and see you in the next one. Ciao!